I just had such a is this how I feel like I need to start over okay welcome back to my channel it's Cass Wow it feels so good to be saying that if this is your first time here please take un momento to tippity tap the bell turn your notifications on of course hit the subscribe button and get ready for more content if you're returning thank you so much I apologize for the long you know pause but you know your girl both jobs was really beating me up y'all so I just had to take a quick breather took the summer off even though I, you know I was still doing my travel assignments but you know we're back we're back with the videos I'm gonna just ease on into it here and there so just thank you for sticking by me thank you today we are going to be doing a travel nursing related video which I'm really excited about because you know what the industry is booming a lot of people are transitioning into travel a lot of people that I know are transitioning into travel and after my last assignment in Dallas I just they really tried to take me out, y'all. But I'm so grateful for that experience because it allowed me to bring up some tough questions. Questions that I didn't even think, oh, I should be talking to my recruiter about this. To me, I was just like, mm, it'll all be figured out. And in retrospect, it was not. So now, from now on, I know exactly what I'm looking for and what questions to ask my recruiter, what I want in my contract. And I really, really just wanted to talk about that with you guys too, especially if you're new because when you go on your first contract the recruiter is the one telling you everything because when you go on your first contract and you don't really know maybe you don't have any travel friends you don't know what questions to ask you're just like okay I'm signing the contract I'm going and that's it I'm just gonna take the experience and that's what I did of course first time was great second time not so much so I really again just want to share this with you so we're gonna just jump right in because I don't want to ramble too much as you guys know I can do <laughs> so the first thing I want to discuss are guaranteed hours now again when I went to Dallas that's what I'll be referencing in this video because that's where all the drama was <laughs> when I was in Dallas I just assumed okay I'm driving 12 hours they need me it's guaranteed the rate was great I was like wow I can't wait to pick up shifts I'm about my bank account about to be just stunning okay I get there and I want to say I can't remember exactly but within the first two weeks I got canceled and I was like okay whatever like I don't mind a day off I don't want to go into work anyways like who wants to go to work now when it happened, I was just like, okay, it's a one-time thing. It was a Friday night. I was like, the census must be low. I was on an orthopedic unit. I normally am. And I was just like, the census must be low. We didn't have a lot of surgeries this week. Whatever. Didn't think anything of it. Well, then the next week, it happened again. And I was like, okay. So I let my recruiter know, of course, as soon as it happened both times. And she, and she just let me know, like, after two cancellations, if they continue canceling you, they're going to have to pay you. And I was like, girl say no more sister this sounds like a blast like getting paid to not go to work cool right well it turns out the hospital that i was at because they are such a huge hospital system and they are all over texas they have their own kind of relationship with travel companies their own relationships with travelers and so they were very adamant about not paying you <laughs> if they canceled you multiple times because they knew how their facilities were I personally have never worked a facility that had a low census every single weekend. It's unheard of. And it's not like I was out in the middle of nowhere. I was in Irving, Texas, which is close to downtown Dallas. And so I'm assuming, like most, because I'm an outskirts kind of hospital girl. Like I want to be by the city, but I don't want to work in the city. So that's why I'm always an outskirts kind of girl. But most of the time, you know, if there's overflow from the major hospitals, they'll come to the city, the hospitals on the outskirts. So I was at least expecting, okay, yeah, we may not have surgeries. We're still kind of post-COVID. Surgeries are kind of just going through the pack, you going outpatient. But I'm expecting the ER to be full. Always, right? So their census was low every single weekend. And they had a policy where they were not going to pay you if they canceled you. And they had so many travelers at that facility at that time. They had a crucial group there that was about 20 to 30 nurses that had been there for almost a year. So they were about to finish up. And then they had about 14 to 15 travelers from different companies there as well. So every time they canceled me, they were also canceling another 7 to 14 people that night. So it was just starting to become intense. A lot of people did cancel their contract in the middle of us they were like I'm here to work and you guys are canceling me almost every day I was lucky the entire 13 weeks that I was there I only got canceled five times which is still a lot 
But there were some people that were getting canceled two shifts a week. So they were working one day a week. And I was like, oh, no. Now, if that would have happened, I would have packed my bags and been back in Atlanta. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so definitely, definitely, definitely talk to your recruiter. Make sure in your contract that guaranteed hours are in there. Of course, when you're a travel nurse, you're thinking they have a need. So why would I even bring up guaranteed hours? You guys have a need, right? So I'm thinking I can pick up shifts and have a blast the whole time they really didn't need me. What essentially happened is that they had built a new tower and it had more beds than their older unit. So they were hiring like one or two nurses here and there to kind of fill in the gap of, the, of that. But then mix that in with the low census, it was just kind of unnecessary. So I ended up staying the whole entire contract and ended up working out because again, crucial, the crucial staff had left. And then a lot of the nurses, travelers had quit because they were like, yeah, you canceled me two times in a week for two, like two weeks in a row. I'm not coming back. So it ended up working out for me. But from now on, when I tell you guaranteed hours is in my contract, guaranteed hours is in my contract. I don't care if the facility, they're just like, this facility is hiring this many staff. Like we don't have any staff. I I don't care guarantee my hours traditionally in your contract if a facility cancels you they are supposed to pay you after the first two cancellations which most facilities don't ever cancel travelers because it's so expensive where <laughs> they're paying us so much so they're like I'd rather just call off my staff that I'm not paying as much and have you guys come into work but they flipped it the other way around because they didn't have to pay us for cancellations they were okay having their staff come in so it was very dramatic it definitely caused me ptsd which i will talk about in another video caused me ptsd about going to work you know because the way that they were calling me off they were calling me off an hour before i was supposed to go into work so i'm used to at most facilities you have a bed meeting in the morning you have a bed meeting around two or three by 3 p.m you know who Actually, by the morning, you know how much staff you have. By 3 p.m., if you have a few call outs, you adjust, you adjust. But if you need to put somebody on call, by 3 p.m., you're putting somebody on call. You don't wait until 5.30 to put somebody on call. And I have to be there in an hour? So, again, make sure you are asking for guaranteed hours on your, like, have it written into your contract. Absolutely. Because you just never know what situation you'll be in. And I definitely did not ever think that would be a problem but it can be so guaranteed hours kiddos don't forget it so next thing that i want to talk about guys is gross pay versus net pay and this is something that is very important obviously it's the money that you're getting paid i want you guys to really focus on this okay so first contract i went with medical solutions second contract i went with cross country now cross country i won't ever travel with again i had an amazing recruiter like she was superb but the company that she worked for was just trash i'm sorry i did not have a good experience i won't travel with them again they scarred me from payroll payroll was a mess the fact that she didn't know that the facility canceled often they were known for canceling often she was a new recruiter to the company when i signed on with her and so she wasn't aware even when i first got canceled she was just like oh girl don't worry about it after the first two they have to pay you anyways and i was like okay cool and then she went back and found out through her boss that that hospital specifically does not pay you and so that really upset her and she fought for me which i really enjoyed but it's one thing to have a good recruiter but if the company isn't good, then it doesn't even matter. So again, gross versus net pay. So gross is the overall pay that you see. You're going to see it. You're going to be like, oh, wow, it looks cute. I, that's cute. You know, that's initially what I'm going to go for. I'm like, okay, this is the rate. I like that. Net pay, though, is what actually hits your account. That's after taxes. Okay, so you need to see both. Most recruiters will not put the net pay up front for you. And even on my contract, they didn't have it. Like I had to keep pestering her like, hey, what is my net pay? She's like, oh, I think it'll be. I said, baby, I don't need you to think. I need you to know and I need you to be on my contract. I need it in my email. I need it written down. I need to know what my net pay is going to be. And so I had to really push that with her as well. And I was just like, absolutely not. Like, I want to know. I'm not sure how taxes work in Texas. You know what I mean? So I was just like, I want to know, are they taking out about 500? Will it be more? You know what? Like, I have to know these things. I want to know how much I truly am getting paid. And that's very important because your gross pay could be beautiful. And then when they take them taxes out, you're like, now, wait a minute. This was a setup. So if you know your net pay up front, you won't have any issues, which was great for me because once I got to Dallas, literally the first check I had an issue I was just like this is not like I didn't even have my net pay I was just like so I contacted her and she's like oh word don't worry girl let me get payroll on it 
Payroll contacts me. It's not even payroll. It's basically another recruiter who's a little bit above my recruiter. So like they're in the same team. So she's trying to get to the bottom of it for me. And I'm just like, at the end of the conversation, I was just like, so you're not from payroll. Oh, no, let me put you on with somebody from payroll. Is that not what we discussed prior? So when I finally get a payroll, it's actually three to four weeks later that payroll actually contacts me. This was a weekly issue. My first three checks were scamp. Not scamp. But my first three checks was missing a couple hundred dollars. And I was like, you know what? My dad always told me, even if it's a few cents, if they take a few cents from 100,000 people, that's bank. You know what I'm saying? So you're not going to get me. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I don't care if it's a, a phone bill or whatever. I'm going to get my pennies back. I don't care if it's one cent. You will give me my one cent back. Because again, when you run the numbers, if you're doing this to multiple people, you're making some type of profit. And it's not going to be off Cleve's back because I'm working. Okay? So when I finally got through to payroll, it was three weeks later. And it was like, oh, well, we don't know what's going on. I said, babe, I'm not getting my net pay. Like, forget the rest of it. I, I just want exactly what was told. Like, when I signed my contract, I had her put in my contract with my net pay was going to be. Figure it out, sister. And I'm not even getting that in my account. So what what's going on? The biggest thing that you have to remember is that you need to document, document, document. With that facility, I didn't even have access to a time clock. They clocked in on a website. So there was actually no clock in machine. Because of the payroll issues from the first week, I literally was writing down timesheets and turning in timesheets every single week. So I'm just like, I had pictures in my phone. I was prepared. So when she tried to tell me like, oh, well, this day you didn't work. I said, girl, hold on. Emailed her and she was like, oh, let me fix it. They were basically just trying to BS me and, you know, finesse. And, oh, no, this is why we did this. I said, girl, that doesn't make sense. Why are you arguing with me about my net pay? It's not like I worked overtime. You know what I'm saying? And some of the numbers was a little crunched off. This is my very basic pay. This is supposed to be the pay that's supposed to be in my account regardless. So, again, gross versus net pay. Make sure you know both and make sure both of them are in your contract. That way, you know it, your recruiter knows it, the company knows it, because as soon as she said something about, oh, net pay, well, I'm not sure if that, I just sent her my, my contract. I was like, girl, I'm not arguing with you, because the numbers are in the paper. Next. <laughs> and just be sure to read your contracts. Like I said, my first contract was a breeze. My recruiter really, he sat on the phone, explained it to me section by section, like he didn't play. The second recruiter, like I said, she was new, so she didn't really know what was going on. One thing that really tried to set me up, okay? When it comes to filling out your paperwork for a travel assignment, again, make sure you're reading every single document. So because I was traveling with a new company, it was a whole new set of paperwork. And of course the paperwork is not the same everywhere, but essentially it is, it's like for the same things, but it doesn't look the same. So one of the things that caught me slipping and the reason why I was having payroll issues in the beginning and why, yeah, my first check was really skip. And I'll tell you why, because of this reason right here. And, you know, whatever order you want to put this in, they're all very important. Make sure you're, you're taking them all to your recruiter and make sure it's all in your contract um, or that you're making sure that you're filling out your paperwork correctly. So the document that actually makes sure that you get your tax free stipend because your X amount of um X amount of miles from home but also that you have what is it called I can't remember off the top of my head but essentially that you have a tax home okay when you fill out the document for your tax home make sure you're filling it out properly again my recruiter she was new I said hey girl just making sure I'm filling this out properly so I can get my tax free stipend and she's like oh I think you did it okay but um honestly I would check with your accountant I don't got no accountant like what do you mean check with my accountant check with your accountant and see so you know me and my dad we sat down I, he helped me with all the paperwork and they purposely put confusing terminology on that document so that you can check it and not get your tax free stipend so when I got to Texas and I saw that first check I said why is half my money missing so then when I got to the bottom of it with her She's like, oh, oh, I think you might have filled the document incorrectly, blah, blah, blah. I said, I specifically asked you for help with this document and you told me to go find outside assistance. Then she's like, oh, no, well, no. When I said, you know, she's like, oh, I think you filled out this document incorrectly. And she was like, well, did you speak to X, Y and Z in the company who works on these documents? I said, that's not what you told me. And I sent her a screenshot again. 
Keep all of your documents, whether it's text messages, emails, all conversations. I have it all, okay? And now the way that iPhone is set up, you can screenshot things and make them a PDF file. When I tell you my drive has it all, like I just dare anybody to try me on anything because I'm just, I'm not responding. I'm just going to send the facts <laughs> because I don't want to get upset. So she goes, oh, you know, did you speak to X, Y, and Z? He's in charge of all the paperwork. He could have helped you. And I said, that's not what you told me. And I sent her a screenshot where she told me to contact my accountant. And she was like, oh, you know, I apologize. I thought that I recommended you to X, Y, and Z. I said, that's not what you said. So this is your fault, okay? And when I, I need you to send me the paper back so I can fix it. And then I want you to give me my money back. So she tried to have payroll call me or her boss, someone who was above her, say like, essentially, because it was the first check and the document was filled out incorrectly, we can't give you your money back, the tax-free stipend back on your account. I... <laughs> Listen, one thing about me, you're not going to play with me about my money, okay? I already don't really care to work. So when I'm working and I'm making my money and I'm doing what I have to do to live the life that I want to live, you are not messing with my check. You're not, especially when we both see that it's your fault. It's one thing if I want to just willy nilly fill out the form and be like, I'm going to just take this L. I got to just eat this cost up, whatever. But specifically, you told me what to do. You told me the wrong information. And then it turns out that you had a resource that I could have used and you didn't recommend that. I chewed out the boss and I chewed out my recruiter and guess whose funds were back in the account? Mine. <laughs> so I'm not arguing with anybody. Please don't be afraid to find your voice when it comes to recruiters, especially if it's your first assignment, guys. With my first assignment, I was lucky I had a good recruiter, but also he had his negatives too, which is why I traveled with a set a different company. I say all of this to say, guys, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself, defend yourself, get rid of recruiters that are not good for you, kind of read the room and sense when someone is trying to play in your face versus someone who just doesn't know what's going on. And like I said, that recruiter, she was an amazing recruiter. I she had her faults but it's because she was new to the job and luckily for me it was my second assignment so I kind of knew what questions to ask and what to say to a certain extent so that saved me but for others it would have been even more of a mess you get what I'm saying so this is why I'm making this video because I don't want you to go on your first assignment and have an assignment like I did in Dallas and just get played all the way around. So I ended up pocketing still a good chunk of money, but I had to literally fight tooth and nail with payroll to get my net pay. Then I had to fight with her and her boss about even getting my stipend for that first check. And it's like, all of this could have been avoided had you given me the resources, given me my net pay, and I could have minded my business. It really is one of those things where you just kind of have to find the confidence, know what you're talking about. I'm going to list down below a few of the Facebook pages that I like to follow, their travel nursing pages. That's really what I use my Facebook for, to find housing for travel nursing and follow the nursing pages. Because there are so many people that have been traveling for such a long time that know so much. If you're a seasoned travel nurse and you have something that you would, you know, absolutely can't live without in your contract drop that down below as well just help us all out because these recruiters are starting to get a little tricky okay um they're trying to play with people's rates they'll tell you the rate can't be raised or they'll tell you that the rate is decreasing and then come to find out when you speak to your manager at the hospital it's not actually the hospital that's lowering the rate it's the travel company so again you got to ask those kind of questions if i'm renewing my contract i'm expecting a bump so if i'm not getting a bump i'm talking to the manager about it and my recruiter because somebody's going to answer the question appropriately either on both ends you're telling me they're not increasing and i'm like okay whatever either i take my l or i move on or somebody's playing around you get what i'm saying so just find your confidence think about these things do not forget guaranteed hours figure out their cancellation policy and definitely definitely make sure you're filling out your paperwork appropriately i cannot stress it enough you guys <laughs> I hope that this video was helpful. Again, any of my seasoned nurses, if you have any tips or tricks, please drop them down in the comment section. If you are a new travel nurse, I hope that this video helps you. If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to drop them down below. And I hope that if I don't have an answer, someone else can help you down below too. Again, I'm going to list those Facebook pages that are super helpful because they have quite literally saved me. Just little situations, you know, 
just people posting their stories about their travel assignments, even when they're actively on assignments, just issues that they have. And they'll say like, hey, what should I do? What do you recommend? Has anyone been in this situation before? And I love to just read through those comments, even if I've never heard of it, because you just never know what will happen. And being single, being a woman, being 12 hours from home in a state where I knew didn't know anyone, it was scary to be going through those issues on my own. But I thank God every day that, you know, my parents raised me to ask the right question yes. and God gave me the confidence to be able to say, absolutely not. Not on Khalees Watch. <laughs> I love you guys so much and I hope that this was very helpful. I will see you in the next one. Bye.